We're gonna skip the montage and we're gonna talk immediately about Trigicon's new optics. But actually, before we talk about these optics immediately, I'm going to disclose uh, the monetary benefit that we get here as a channel here at T-Rex Arms and that we get working with Trigicon. Uh, first off, we were not paid to do this video with Trigicon. Uh, there's probably a number of other videos being released about now because uh, this is when the embargo lifts uh, to be able to talk about these optics. And so everyone floods YouTube with their content, hoping that they can get the most viewed video, be the most popular, and answer y'all's questions. Um, we're producing the video because I am assuming there's not gonna be a lot of content showing these optics being shot, and that is what I, the, the void I would like to fill versus torture tests and you know first day opinions that a lot of people are gonna be publishing. And some of that is useful, but some of you guys just wanna hear how shootable are these optics, and that's what we're gonna be talking about. Um, as far as the uh, monetary benefit of doing this video, we are a major uh, reseller of Trigicon products. I very much like Trigicon products. I've been using the RMR as my first pistol mounted red dot for, I wanna say nine, eight years, something like that now. Uh, this is my carry gun, been running a one MOA RMR. I trust uh, Trigicon optics uh, quite a lot. And so when I heard that they were coming out with some new additions to their line to make it a little bit more modern and improve it, I went, hey, that's awesome and cool because you guys really did revolutionize the uh, practical slide mounted pistol market uh, with the RMR so many years ago. And then after that, people have made all sorts of new optics. And many of you all will claim, and in some ways, rightfully so, that companies like Hollow Sun have done more for progressing the red dot market on pistols and other companies like Trigicon and other folks are starting to catch up or should try to catch up. So, um, but regardless of all of that, now we have two optics on the market from Trigicon that sort of round out their line. So first off, we have the RMR, which is the traditional, everyone has seen it, everyone has seen the profile in video games. Um, it's a nice little red dot, it's extremely durable, very tough. Um, I've never actually broken one of these and I have shot with a many of them, um, you know, many different models and also just quantity in our armory and I've never busted one. It's probably the toughest red dot on the market right now to put on a handgun due to the geometry and due to the manufacturing. After the RMR was made, they came out with the SRO. A lot of people said this wasn't a duty rated optic. Um, I know a lot of guys who actually do use them in a duty or military capacity. Um, at the end of the day, every single electro optic has a breaking point at some point. The SRO has, will break before an RMR will but at which point the SRO is actually going to break is still so high that it, in my opinion, it can still be used in a lot of different applications. And my new carry gun, which I haven't swapped to, well, I, I can now, I have went and shot defensive ammo out of it, has an SRO. Um, I like the large window, I like how, sit it how low it sits um, on the slide, um, I like the top loaded battery, it just has a lot of benefits over the RMR, and I've been shooting with an SRO now as my primary optic for a couple of years now. So this is gonna be my new carry gun, um, I might actually go to one of the new Trigicons, but we'll see about that. Enter the RMR HD. This is basically, uh, the simple version is an RMR and an SRO had a baby. Uh, the window is about 30% larger than an RMR. Um, it is a little bit smaller than an SRO. Instead of having a circular window, it is still that square form factor, which on some pistols like a Glock looks really slick, looks really nice. Um, there's a couple things about this optic that are uh, especially different. There is a auto sensor, uh, device that is actually pulling light from the front of the pistol to adjust the brightness of your dot if you choose to use this mode, which the regular RMRs actually have that as well. If you tap both buttons at the same time, you get the auto mode. Um, it doesn't work real well because it's kind of collecting light in your general area. It's not pulling the light from a direction. So if I'm in a well-lit room and I aim out into a, aim into a dark room, I'm pulling light around my pistol, my standard RMR, and it's gonna blast that red dot and it's gonna starburst and I'm not gonna see super well into the darkness. Uh, this optic on the other hand, uh, similar to the old technology on the Burris, is actually pulling light from the front. And so it's a little bit more accurate if I'm in a dark room aiming out into a a lit room, it'll actually auto brightness based on the environment I'm aiming the pistol into. Now what distance that actually is accurate to, I'm not sure, um, and I'm not gonna be using the auto setting uh, myself. The other thing they added to this optic uh, that is of note, but I think is going to be useless for like 95% of people and is gonna be useless after using it for two weeks, is the uh, bullseye reticle. So just like the Hollow Suns, just like the MRO HD, you have the ability to go from single dot to a bullseye view. My theory is a lot of people get that going, ooh, it's training wheels, it's gonna help me learn how to shoot my pistol. They use the bullseye, and then after like two weeks, they go, 
this thing is dumb. I don't need it. And then they swap to the regular dot. Um, and that's what I'd recommend. If you're new to a red dot, maybe try out the bullseye. Ultimately, I think it's kind of useless. Um, and I would just go to a single dot. Um, that's my opinion. So the other thing here is they made the buttons much larger, just like the SRO. Uh, it's got a battery compartment that you can load without removing the optic. That's super awesome. Um, the other thing about this optic is it has the RMR uh, form factor, so it has the little edges or corners on the top, so it's a little bit more reinforced in the SRO. Uh, my theory, and again, I haven't tested this, my theory is this is going to be uh, just as tough or about as tough as the RMR, so if you get one of these bad boys, you are not going to have to worry about anything. It does still have the blue tint, and I would venture to say it's more blue than an SRO, and it's just as blue as the RMR. So if you're not a huge fan of that blue tint that Trigicon does to enhance battery life, um, that is something that you're gonna have on the RMR HD. Uh, and if you want that clear window, the SRO is noticeably, even just standing here right here, um, is noticeably more clear. It also means the battery life is probably less, but you know what, that's fine. It's a top loading battery. I can swap it out whenever I want. So that's the Trigicon RMR HD in a nutshell. As you will see, it does have the scallop cut uh, pushing forward to the ejection port. Um, it will not work on uh, pistols that have the slide milling super far forward. Um, the most notable is probably the uh, F, man, I sound like such a YouTuber saying all this. Uh, and the most notably the FN 509, uh, where the optic cut is so close to the ejection port, your SRO will actually hang over it, and that's gonna cause all sorts of issues. So definitely double check that, and it does sit further forward than an SRO. So in this case, it is right up there next to the uh, barrel. Uh, right up to the ejection port, I should be fine, but that also means I'm gonna have more carbon fouling on the window, and I do recommend cleaning that off every time you shoot. Um, or if you're shooting occluded, like I do, um, for a lot of my shooting, it's not gonna matter. Moving on to the next optic. Jeez, this is too long, let's just get to the shooting. But I'm trying to answer y'all's questions, because you know I'm trying to be a good YouTuber for you all. Um, this is the Trigicon RCR. This is essentially, uh, I'm just gonna say it, an acro. Um, it's essentially a 509T. It's essentially an MPS. It's essentially all the other enclosed optics out there that some of you guys really like. Um, there's a couple things about this optic that's really cool. One, it sits on an RMR footprint. That is correct. Unlike all the other ones that have weird proprietary stuff going on, this sits on an RMR footprint. And they've done this by having a special little uh, screw that you actually tighten from the side. It is still twisting downwards. Um, they have some patents and stuff going on here. Um, which some of you guys didn't find and couldn't leak because they didn't patent the optics per se, they patented the mounting interface. So some of you guys weren't clever enough uh, to leak this optic because uh, you didn't know what to look for. Um, but now I just you know, told you all. Um, the other thing about this optic that is a little different that some people have started complaining about uh, on Reddit and some other places is the top loading battery. I'm also destroying a lot of bug families right now. I'm covered in bugs and I'm killing so many while I'm talking. <laughs> But there's a top-loaded battery. The cool thing with this is on the hollow sun, it sits on the side and it pops out with a tray. This means the optic sits taller. On the acro, it sits on the side, so it's a little bit wider. Uh, because this sits on the top, it means the entire optic can sit lower. Um, people say like, oh look, three flies. Oh, I only got one of them. People do say that because, um, because it's sitting on the top, that means there's more, that's an entire like B, um, because there's just bugs everywhere. Um, it's pretty wild, it's also super hot out. But um, it's a little bit wider on the top and some people are like, ooh, that's gonna make my window smaller. Window size is about the same as an Acro and it's about the same as a 509T. So I don't think that's going to be a huge issue um, and I can change the battery whenever I want and I think that's pretty cool. Um, windage and elevation turrets, you know, back and side, uh, that's pretty standard. And that's about it for both of these optics. So the real question is, and I know there's other videos out there guys are doing, they're throwing them off of roofs and doing crazy stuff and torture testing. Um, to me, it's not so much the torture testing that I care about because these are Trigicon optics. I don't think durability is going to be an issue with these. What I wanna know, and what you guys are probably more interested in, is the shootability of these optics. How well do these optics shoot? How wide is the window? Um, you know, what's going on with the optic when it comes to actually shooting drills? Because let's face it, durability is one aspect to the whole puzzle. But like, I have this to shoot. I have this to have an, an accurate sight picture and engage a target or a person or an animal or whatever it happens to be. That's what you should be more focused in than just, oh, how durable is it? And when in reality, you probably like 
keep it in the safe. You're not actually doing a whole lot of crazy stuff with it um, unless you're someone who maybe gets to shoot it. So what I'm gonna be doing today is I'm gonna be shooting these as much as possible um, with my buddy Garrett, who is an M-class carry optic shooter. He's out here pretty often. You guys have seen him on Instagram. And we're just gonna be shooting. We're gonna take turns. We're gonna give you all some feedback or opinions based on these two optics. And uh, we've both shot the SRO, um, other optics, the RMRs. So we do have experience with those to, to know how these compare. Um, and then the goal is just to give you feedback on the shooting performance side. Not the reliability and the torture testing side, just the shootability side. And as much as I would like to shoot these for like weeks on end to get to 10,000 rounds, um, with my schedule that is not gonna happen right now, we're just gonna shoot as much as we can for today, give you information that you can use to make a well-informed decision on whether you should purchase one of these optics. And then in the future, maybe we'll do a more thorough video, maybe throwing one of these around, doing some crazy torture testing. So, with all that said, now I'm done with all the traditional YouTube crap. Now let's actually go and shoot these suckers. I just literally was just like, ah! But yeah, picking the dot just fine. It's not bad. That was all uh, sub six? What? Seven yard hostage Yeah, about all of them, I think we were in the fives. I don't think you had anything above six. I had a four, and that was me just rushing it to see what I could do. That was pretty good. So. Now we'll take, now we'll swap guns. Okay. Same drill. So all on paper, two alphas. Slow, but whatever. There's a delta. <laughs> oh, you Let's calm suck. down. But two alpha, two oh, alpha yes. over there. Tell you, yep. there is a mic in there. 379. Pretty good. It was, yeah. 340. Cleaned up that uh, delta. 376. Horrible grip. That was aggressive. I think they were all hits, but not pretty. 292. There we go. Your so we've just completed shooting a bunch of different drills using both optics. Uh, we were kind of trading back and forth. So I got time shooting the boxy Trichicon as well as the RMR HD. 
So we shot, obviously you all have seen some of the drills, one-handed, some shooting on the move inside the boxes, getting killed because we're not checking our corners and doing CQB like you guys think we should be doing. And um, but the main thing that we were both kind of looking for and what I was looking for is, are these optics gonna slow me down from a performance standpoint when it comes to actually shooting and delivering rounds on target? We're not doing destructive testing. We're not throwing these across the range, although we did talk about it and that's just stupid. Um, and at the end of the day, these are Trigicon optics. I do trust the reliability and durability of these optics. I know there's other guys who are gonna be drop testing these. And frankly, a lot of that testing, in my opinion, uh, is pretty useless for the everyday average person. Um, if you are jumping in and out of helicopters and doing crazy stuff, or you're carrying a gun in a um, open carry safari land level two holster out in public and you're, you're you know, chasing suspects and rolling around on the ground and doing combative stuff. Yes, some different stuff can apply to that type of person, but the average uh, concealed carry person like me or like Garrett, uh, it's in our pants, protected, and I'm not rolling around on the ground all the time. Um, so some of those standards that people have for these optics, they want it to be as tough as possible, uh, be as cheap as possible, and, and allow the maximum performance when it comes to shooting you're not always gonna get all those things. So I do think there's some unrealistic expectations out there for what these optics and what firearms in general have to do. Um, but anyway, Garrett, why don't you introduce yourself to the people? Hey, what's going on, people? Um, I am Garrett McLaren, uh, a little bit of background on me. Uh, I shoot a lot of USPSA, I'm a master class carry optic shooter. Um, and before that, I was in the army for one contract, was a sniper qualified infantryman. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I just do uh, shootings what I like to do. I like to just try and get better. Um, and help other people get better. So that's my background. I do have some stuff to add to what you just said, if you don't mind. Go ahead. About quality control. Um, one thing that people don't think about with quality control is the batch sizes. So a lot of these companies have the ability to do much higher batch sizes. And uh, there is a little bit of stuff that comes into, you know, um, did you just get a lemon or something along those lines. So I think people freak out about that. And the other thing is, this kind of comes from a mil spec. Uh, it's like the term mil spec. A lot of these optics, you know, when you're torture testing them like that, you know, a lot like what Lucas mentioned, but also the thing to think about is like, these are, if they're going to a unit, a military unit, right. it's getting handed down for like 20 Forever. some years. <laughs> yeah. And so that's why like the ACOG is amazing because you'll be like six people have had that ACOG. And it still um, works. Yeah, absolutely. So something to just think about when you look at that is uh, when people are torture testing them, uh, you know, it's like, is that a really good extensive test of like a large batch of what's, what's actually happening? Um, I don't, yeah, I don't pay as much mind to those anymore yeah. as I used to when I got into it, into yep. shooting, so. For sure, and the funny thing is we've shot so much that kit doesn't break as often as people think no. when you're actually, it's just funny, yeah. kind of how it works. You also need to have care for your equipment. Like that, that's like, what? I get, I could, well, care for your equipment. Like I get that I could maybe handle a nail, like I could take oh, a yeah, nail yeah, and yeah. hammer it in with it, but it's like, I'm not trying to do that with my scope, so. I mean, I use ACOGs to <laughs> pop you, the pins out of my you Glock. Do. <laughs> but, um, you do. So, uh, so about the optics. So we both obviously uh, shot both these optics. I have shot the SRO a lot. Garrett has shot it a little bit. But you have spent more time on the 509T from Hollow Sun. Yep. Um, what are your thoughts on both optics having shot? And we shot just for uh, transparency. I think we only shot around 750-ish rounds. So divide that by two. That's how much rounds we shot, and then divide that by two, and that's what we shot on each gun. Mm -hmm. uh, because we were we weren't just trying to dump rounds into trash into the berm. We were actually shooting drills and trying to get into stuff. So some of us hit more than others. Some uh, some of us were faster than others actually. Sometimes. Um, yeah. Yes. Um, but as you all saw um, on these these drills, I'm not beating Garrett all the time, no. and Garrett's not beating me all the time. There is a very equal amount of performance going on. But the bees are beating us both. And the bees are absolutely annoying and destroying us. So. Optics. Yeah. What was your feedback so, on? Uh, yeah, I like both of them. I think they're both really, really solid. I think this is a, like I carry an RMR, um, so I think Same. this is a good improvement to the RMR. Um, I'm a fan of closed emitter. Uh, I've shot uh, a lot of the 509T because it's a uh, you know kind of more of a budget, I guess you would say, um, closed emitter dot. Yep. The big biggest difference, like I, I shoot the SRO now uh, for competition. I really like the SRO, and um, when you have a bigger window, it's just kind of like a bigger, little bit bigger margin for error if you mess up your yes. presentation. I like that. Um, but between these two, I think they're both really, really solid. I didn't have any issues or anything where I was like losing the dot because of the optic or something different about the, the optic. Um, what I will say about open emitter and closed emitter, what I found is that if it's really sunny and the sun is to your back, two panes of glass will tend to reflect more than a yeah, single kind of issues. close together uh, pane of glass. So um, I like them both. I think it's a really, really cool um, innovation from Trigicon. I mean, it's still just a red dot that goes on your pistol, but I like yep. it, I like it. Um, I definitely prefer just, and I'll have to shoot them more, but I prefer having a larger window such as the RMR HD. 
Um, I actually think this is an awesome upgrade from the RMR, and I would ca classify yeah. this as an upgrade from the RMR. The larger window does make it easier, especially on the last reel we were shooting one-handed. Um, if I did jack up my presentation, because one-handed shooting with a dot sucks, it, it really does. Um, I would even argue potentially irons can be more useful-ish kind of sometimes. Um, having the larger window did help quite a bit. Um, the ability to load the battery so I never have to take the RMR off. Um, if I didn't already have an SRO on my pistol and I could always change it out, um, this would be the optic I would use. And since it's protected by my concealed carry clothing, you know, it's not out in a safari land holster. I'm not out in the rain standing there. And let's face it, most of us don't just go stand in the rain like an emo, all depressed about life. Like you're indoors, so you're in your house, and then you might walk through the rain from your car into a restaurant. You're not out in the elements with like rain pouring into your optic. Uh, I think the whole enclosed emitter uh, conversation is a little um, also blown out of proportion and blown out of expectation for the average concealed carry citizen. Mm -hmm. um, so this optic right here is definitely, I would prefer running this. Um, and honestly, my performance today, um, if I were to plot my SRO, shoot that, shoot this, it's gonna be the same. Um, even though the glass on this optic is a little bit more tinted, I never actually noticed it. I really actually only notice it when I aim at the ground and I could see a high contrast blue against like the gravel. But once I'm actually out and about doing stuff, it. I'm not. It never bothers me. I'm not seeing. It. I see it more on the RMR. For yeah, because it's closed, maybe but, smaller, maybe. Yeah, and it's know. a weird thing when you start shooting dots like this and you're evaluating them. It's like, but once you really start shooting, you don't. I don't know. You don't really notice some of that weird stuff because you should be kind of target focused. You're focused and not on the target about it. and what's going on. Um, I agree with the closed emitter thing. I think that it's kind of an overhyped thing. I still like them. I don't think it's like bad if you want it, but I don't think it's as necessary as people make it out to be. Um, and uh, yeah, window size is nice. Like the SRO compared to the RMR. That's, it's nice, it's a margin of error. Um, and I kind of feel like between these two, it's, it's a little bit of the same thing. It's like, eh, it's a little bit extra, why not? Did you ever notice the larger top no. width? Nope, no. I didn't either. No, shooting. not at all. Because again, we're so focused on shooting. Yeah, the, the battery <laughs> thing is I think one of the biggest improvements. It is so annoying to have to take your RMR off when you need to change the battery. And I just, I mean, this is just a much better way of, of kind of doing that and not having to worry about it, um, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, the mounting system is interesting here. Yes. Uh, because Two good luck stripping inside. these screws out. That's one thing that I think is really cool. Uh, most people out there, you guys uh, think that everything is a Picatinny rail and so that it doesn't need a torque spec. Um, I used to be that person. Uh, but these screws will get stuck, especially like the MOS plates or like some of these smaller um, screws will strip out really easy and that's a super big pain to like drill oh, out yeah. and then you might mess up the holes and all that stuff. So I actually think that's one cool thing about the uh, way that they mounted that is kind of innovative. We'll see if it, you know, has, has issues weird issues because it is kind of new. a new thing, but it's kind of cool. Like there's no way you could strip that, uh, uh, that out. You, uh, they include a card to tell you how much you insert it in there and you move the Allen key to a certain number, uh, a certain number of lines. Again, read the instructions for mining this optic. So you probably can over tighten, but mm -hmm. they are absolutely. providing the instructions so that you don't do that. Use torque specs on small screws like this, guys. It's absolutely worth it. Yeah, especially on a small piece of equipment like 100%. this. 100%, it's not a Picatinny rail. And I used to be that guy, I just get pliers. Me too, 100%. So um, now keep in mind guys, this is not the final like expose of uh, opinion on these optics, but just from using these for today, which is not, this is not normally what I would like to do for reviewing a product. Um, but I also don't see these as a new product. I mean, this is just expanding on the RMR, which is a proven optic Trujicon has made. And this is more or less the same technology just presented in a different form factor. So in my opinion, these aren't going to require new testing per se that say a brand new optic from a brand new company i think should require so they have a track record like they have a, has a track record they have a big, track yeah. record and so um you know i could take five days shooting this up to ten thousand rounds but like what is that actually going to show probably not a lot so and this is all i can spend time on right now because of other projects and other videos you guys might want to see so um there's other guys that are going to be doing videos on this check those out as well um, but from just a shooting performance standpoint both of these performed we were able to shoot drills to a high standard uh, we didn't have any issues shooting just a few hundred rounds through each optic a piece um now none of the targets shot back today though none so. of the targets shot back we are alive and well but the bees the bees are shooting back. the bees are not happy <sighs> it's real bad that's horrible so um, with all that said, guys, we're going to be producing, as you all have already seen, lots of shorter content like this. You will see Garrett more often, most likely, in other videos. Um, but I'm really happy about these optics. Trigigon has now rounded out their line. I can't think of another optic that they could make besides maybe a budget RMR or like a budget something that's in the $300 range. Um, I mean, now they have an enclosed, a competitive duty optic. Hybrid. <laughs> yeah, and then a competition optic, the SRO, which I think is 
perfectly fine for other use cases. And then of course the traditional RMR. So they've got everything now. You get the best of both worlds. You get everything. So yeah. So take care guys. Uh, make sure you are training and not just shooting into trash uh, when you come out to the range. Hi, my name is Garrett McLaren and I believe in accountability. There is one mic on this target. Vote for me.